Hello and welcome to Pay Dirt TV. I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Dan Locker, Managing Director of Western Areas. Dan, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Dan, uh, you just released your quarterly results recently and it, it looks like it was a pretty tough quarter with uh, production down costs up. Can you talk us through what, what's happened and, and, and how things are going for us, Dana? Yeah, for sure. Look, um, yes, it was a tough quarter and um, we, we released it to the market on Friday. We also released a uh, full year guidance downgrade um, because of the impact of the quarter basically on the overall annual production. Um, it's funny mining, um, we, 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 we tend to think it's quite easy but it, as you know it's a risky business and we uh, down at the bottom of Flying Fox uh, suffered a seismic event. Now we, we do have seismicity and uh, we do cater for that in how we mine and what ground support we use. Um, unfortunately at this time because of the age of Fox and the maturity we don't really have a lot of optionality in terms of being able to jump into ex extra areas. So. In the past, that's what we used to do. We would then re-support that area, which is um, our strategy. So we don't lose the area and we don't lose the nickel tons. So the nickel tons basically get postponed into later into FY21. Um, and uh, we then go about our business in basically re-supporting and re-accessing those areas. Now that can take a month or two months of work and it's a cost obviously on top of your normal operating costs. So um, so we had that issue and then in conjunction we had uh, a very large amount of spotty coal ore was mined out of ore development uh, with some uh, intrusive sort of uh, geological features which dilute the ore but also that when you mine uh, ore drives just generally it's more dilutive than stoping. So when you have, you know, in that quarter, 40% of your O1 was from more driving, then um, you can see that the, the effect of dilution is greater than if you had a much larger stoping production front. Dan, one sort of the problems at Flying Fox would have uh, knocked out the whole of the forest area operations because it was your only mine there. But Forest Daily is about much more than just Flying Fox now, isn't it, with, with Spotted Coil, as you mentioned, but you've also got a number of development projects there as well. That's right, Dom. I mean, Fox at the moment is actually the lowest of the production fronts we have in terms of mines. Spotted Coil is still a good mine, and it's got a very strong four to five year mine life ahead of it. So Spotted Coil will be mining between 12 and 13,000 nickel tons a year, year in, year out, as Fox comes off. We've always sort of told the market that Fox is a maturing mine and it will fundamentally just have a year and a half to two years of mine life based on reserves. We obviously like to push that forward and we'll be working uh, on, on some strategies to do that. But at Forest Daily there's lots of nickel. We've got a great infrastructure. So we've got a, a SCATS project which is heap leaching. Uh, that will be commissioned by the end of the year and that will then start uh, producing nickel sulfate solution that will move into the MREP um, bioleach plant and that will then flow into a high grade uh, concentrate product that we're currently producing um, at, at the MREP plant. So that's a great project and that's um, started and will be commissioned. Um, we've also got the engineers working now quite quite hard on the new morning project which will be a small underground mine um, and these are all to basically backfill the when Fox basically comes to an end. So we are progressing on those project fronts and we've also got obviously a much larger project which is Digger South. That's going to be a few years down the line. So for us Dania as a, as a cash flow um, in terms of generator for the company, yes we have you know quite a few years ahead of us. So um, we thought the market was a little bit overreactive but um, look, when you, when you down guidance and you have a higher or a, a difficult quarter, um, the market takes, takes, takes its toll on you and um, we need to just move on and um, show the market and, give, and get our confidence back. Getting the confidence back uh, from a market perspective won't just be about Forestania anymore either. You've also got your massive Odysseus nickel project development uh, up at the Cosmos Complex there. Uh, I've noticed in the quarterly results that you mentioned that the, the first development cuts have been fired and, and obviously the underground is progressing there. Can you give us an update on both the underground and the uh, arrival of the shaft hoisting equipment? Yes, look, I was up at site with the board last week. We went underground, had a good look around. Things are progressing extremely well. The surface civil work is now 
on track. We're pouring uh, foundations for the winder house. We've got ruck now two thirds of the way down with a pilot hall for the main shaft um, uh, sort of uh, excavation. Uh, underground, the Bamenko are now pulling cuts, two cuts, three cuts, four cuts a day on the main decline down to Odysseus. We'll be hitting ore around about August next year. So, you know, we were now less than a year away from all production at Odysseus. Um, so we are very, very happy with, with, with the physical progress. The good, other good news is that um, we now have video, video footage and, 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 and uh, information from Richards Bay that all of the shaft hoisting and the uh, winder house are now at the port and we should be loading ships around about the 6th of November so that's all on track and it's always good um, to have that equipment uh, arriving in in Henderson in West Australia uh, before the end of December and then we'll, 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 we'll track it up to site so uh, as far as Odysseus and of course the M6 deposit which is the other new reserve uh, 47,000 nickel tons that we've added we're now currently running optimization studies on how we will bring AM6 into the Odysseus schedule uh, there's a lots of moving parts in terms of, you know, the mill capacity. Should we make it uh, bigger than 900,000 tons per annum? So that's been optimised. The shaft's been optimised for how much volume it can take in terms of ore and waste, uh, power requirements, etc. So it's um, flat out at Odysseus, and it's going to be an absolute great mine. And as well as Odysseus and Forestania, you've also got your investment in panoramic resources. We've had a, a good run this week. Uh, it seems that things are on track to turn around and get it back into production there. Yeah, look, it's a question we get asked almost uh, daily on what, we, what we're doing with panoramic. And we've, and we've made it very clear that we're holding a cornerstone stick. Um, it's an option for us in terms of, you know, looking for new nickel sulfide deposits. And it is a reasonably good sulfide, you know, it's polymetallic with nickel, copper and cobalt. Um, they have come a long way. They've put in their crosscut to the, to the vent rise. The vent rise, uh, as they announced the market yesterday, is going great guns. Seems like Ruck are doing good work across both sides. Um, but look, we, we, we're having a we hard look at that uh, in terms of our view of the moving nickel market. And, um, you know, we, we, uh, we will keep on maintaining that as, as a strategic option for us in terms of longer term supply of nickel into Western areas. Just on the nickel market itself, I noticed again in the quarterly that you, that you realised a higher average price in the September quarter. How bullish are you on the, on the nickel price? Look, it's the view currently in the market is that short term we might get a bit of pain, although you know it's been sitting in, sort of around that seven buck US a pound. So it's it's short term pain. Medium term things should loosen up a bit and things should get a bit more exciting in terms of pricing. But the long term view is absolutely concrete that the electric vehicle market is going to boost the prices and um, and, and similarly with copper and a few other metals. So. As a company, we are going to maintain our view of uh, strategic view that we will you know, stick to nickel, and nickel will will come um, with a very good forward-looking price. Um, I think we're in for a good run, and I think that we may get a few, you know, downward uh, moves on, on on the price, which we're currently experiencing, just drop it up down to about six eighty-five. So I think it's going to be very exciting, and uh, and I think Odysseus project and the rest of Forestania will actually be mining into probably mid-20s and Odysseus into the 30s um, with, with good prices. Dan, best of luck. Uh, I'm sure the market will be keeping an eye out for the progress at Odysseus and the turnaround story of the rebound at um, Forestania as well. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks you, Dan.